What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Cesar, and we are talking about Bitcoin Cash. Shout out to the Dragon Riders in the House of the Dragon. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to see more. <clears throat> we have fallen off a cliff, my friends. We have fallen right off a cliff with very mid-level volume, not really significant volume at all. Um, it kind of feels, you know, I don't like to use the word manipulated, but uh, coordinated, I guess it's the same thing. It feels, it feels not real to me. And, and maybe that's just trauma. I don't know what to call it, but relatively speaking, it is at a good area to buy, right? This price point is at the previous resistance points that we had before we broke out. We do have some kind of a double bottom look right now. Previous areas of resistance back here. If we take the low, the relative low here to this relative high, this is the 618 area. You know, but looking at it this way as well, it's very common to go to the 618 and then up to your 382 reject when you're working your way down to lower prices or your 786, 886 area. I mean, we could genuinely go to prices that are below $200 at this rate. You know what I mean? I don't think we're going to. Um, it really depends on what we do in, in the more immediate term, right? We, if we flip this day green, I think there's, there's a lot of hope, but the day already is down 9.4%. So that's not a small ask, but that's also not a, not a hard thing to accomplish for Bitcoin Cash. We're, we're accustomed to these larger wicks when it comes to finding our lows itself. So if we, if we could have a green day today, that'd be really nice. Um, <clears throat> um, we definitely have that rejection off the 123 moving average. That's not what I meant to draw off of this here. I wanted to look back here. An area that we had been finding support before is now showing resistance and that's not necessarily the best of signs. If we take this more relative fib from a low point to a high point, that's not the low, but this is. Um, the way that this looks would suggest prices down at about 254, if not even 216. But we can avoid all of that technically if we hold this 886 as support. And yes, we're below it now, but as long as we're not closing the day below and we have 20 hours and 54 minutes left to uh, to close the day, then there's hope. But if we do close the day below here, uh, this could be where we go. And who knows, man? Maybe we go all the way down here to this area today, and then wick back up. You know, this this drop. I think is close to being over in the sense of time, but in the sense of price action, we could drop a lot more. We could absolutely drop a lot more. Um, just as easily, this could be our low. We really could find some kind of double bottom here and then continue to move up higher. Um, it's not the easiest to say, but I will say that anybody who's gone long, anybody who's probably entered the markets recently, if this, if this is your first crypto market, um, I bet a lot of people are, are not having a good time right now. <clears throat> panic selling, all that kind of stuff. If we look at the crypto fear and greed index, we're at a 26 right now. That's one point away from being an extreme fear. Um, I'm gonna get rid of that ad because it was just a person's butt farting. Uh, it said five signs of liver uh, something, liver liver problems, I, I don't know. Um, I don't have liver problems. I don't know I don't know what that, that was in reference to. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> anyways. Uh, we have moved down now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days in a row. Um, this could be, you know, I don't know if we get a, a green day today, but this could be the last day of the drop. If not, sometimes these days, these movements sound like to come in sevens or nines, even, even greater uh, amounts of time than that. But let's just see like this one here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you guessed it, seven right there. Yes, we ended up moving lower eventually. And that was a five day. Five days are also a somewhat relative count. You know, one, two, three, four, five, um, <clears throat> right there. But we can only go down so much for so long uh, consistently. So, you know, at, at some point it is gonna have to give to the other side. That doesn't mean that we're absolved of going lower. You know, if we hold these areas today, we have a pop up here. That doesn't mean that we're absolved of going lower, but it would definitely be the first step in kind of uh, showing that, that we might have a chance of not seeing these 253 to 216 levels. I don't know. I don't know what to think right now. Based off this FIB, if I wasn't attached to the Bitcoin cash chart, if I wasn't like so heavily involved in the crypto markets and I had no idea about anything other than the technicals, just looking at the chart at, at face value, a call to 253 to 216 feels simple and obvious and easy. But having a little bit of experience in the crypto markets, it's often these times when we have these ferocious moves that at any point in time, you can just turn around like a flip of a switch, man, and, and see a pump that's bigger than any of these days to the downside. 
you know it's hard this is why they call it catching a falling knife right because it's hard to tell when the exact low is going to be and it could be at any moment um and again i feel i feel the most confident not guessing where the price is going to be but the timing of the low itself and i feel like we're getting there if not there already right we're, we're pretty close um but with a very short amount of time we can drop a lot more that's for sure so it's hard to say. I do have a feeling that August will actually be a green month, as as uh, uh, controversial as that might be. We're already down 27.99%, 28%, let's just say, this month. Um, but I have I have a wicked feeling that it will be a green month. So that's there's that call right there. I actually want to go back and see. Let's just look at Bitcoin Cash and see what it, what its odds are for August being green or red based off of a historical reference. So last year's August was a red month. We actually had a 16% move down on a closing basis. Big red month moved down 34% overall, but half that month was moving back up. We had a 26% pump uh, from the low to where we closed. That was 2023, uh, yeah, 2022 also a red month, moved down 17%, which isn't as extreme as these two times were, but for the boringness that we had, that is actually one of the more extreme months, I think. Uh, maybe not. It's actually pretty pretty on par, pretty average. Um, so that's two red, Octo or red August in a row. 2021, we had a green one. Yet again, though, started off rocky, came back up and closed green. This is kind of what I would be looking for, what I would expect. Um, not a good point of reference though this august because that is coming in after this high right coming in after this high here connecting with this line right this was the august after that well this is the august after that so hopefully we get some uh more positive price action afterwards instead of seeing the ultimate you know downside like we did last time um so that's two reds versus one green go to 2020 Another red there, three reds to one to one green, 2019. Four reds to one green. August is not a good month, you guys. 2018, August, five reds to one green month. And then 2017, one green month there, the very first August. So five to two. Statistically speaking, uh, it's, it's a good chance that August could not be on our sides. But, you know, we'll see. I have a feeling... I have a feeling we've got, you know, we've got a long, long time to go, 26 days, 21 hours, essentially 27 days to turn this month around. I think we will uh, because, again, I don't know as far as like where in price we will find our low. It could be here. It could be lower. But as far as time goes, I think that we will see that in this first half of August, maybe even over the next couple days or so, you know, if, if not today itself. So um, seven red days in a row. We can only go down straight for so long just as we can only go up straight for so long. So uh let's just see how it goes man i'm not calling for a low i wouldn't be surprised if this was the low but I, I feel like i've remained neutral kind of since this uh this day that we broke 400 and i, I want to remain neutral um until we get some more positive evidence in the charts even if we move up today or tomorrow you know even if we see prices back up here um, i'm not going to be completely convinced that we're, we're done going lower because we could just find resistance at this area that we found support before and then go down after all we have uh, broken this inverse head and shoulders pattern, right? We didn't get our measure move and we just straight rejected back down. So um, we could absolutely have some more downside to go, but I'm not worried about it one way or another. You know, I'm, I'm not holding my breath over it. I, I just wish I had more cash to put into it. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm still looking at targets that are at 13K to 23K by the end of this cycle. This does feel like a good moment for the weak hands to get out and for the strong hands to come in. Somebody said it in the comments that wealth is normally transferred from the less patient investors to the more patient investors. And I think that this is a, uh, this is gonna prove to be one of those moments where the people who are less patient are going to capitulate into the hands of the people who, who are able to suffer through this, so to speak. But it's really not that bad, guys. It's, it's a prime opportunity. This is one of the last opportunities that we'll have to buy prices around here. And I know, I know a lot of you are like, don't say that. We could go down, you know, we could keep going down. And we could, we could drop another $50, but timing wise, we're not gonna be here forever. And, and it's just a matter of time before we do see this next leg up that will take us above $1,000. But I'm gonna stop talking. I think, I think I've said everything I need to say in this video. Um, hit that like button, subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. Thank you all for being here. <clears throat> As of right now, we do have bullish divergence forming on a weekly basis on our weekly MACD. 
Um, we are still we're around the 40 here. I don't know. It doesn't look it doesn't look good on the weekly RSI to be fair, and the daily RSI doesn't look the best either. But time will tell. We'll see how it goes. Anyways, take care, guys. Um, if we move lower again, it could be as low as like 250. If not, this could prove to be some kind of double bottom right here at this relative 886 area. And we could start to move back up to at least, I would think, 360 around there to potentially that $400 area. That's what we're looking to do. Um, really, we want to get back above that $400 area. That, that's kind of the goal right now. I wonder if this were to be the low. I haven't drawn this fit because I don't know. I don't know if this is the low yet, right? That's why I haven't drawn this. But if it were to be the low, yeah, 400 would be the area that we want to get above. Technically here, it's 387, but that's above your 6.9 is 400. So, um, I wonder, because if we, if we pull it down, it only goes lower. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with it. I, I wanna see prices above 400 before, before I get too, too excited. But ultimately guys, nothing's changed. I'm still excited. I still feel the same about Bitcoin Cash as I have uh, this whole cycle. I think this will be the first you know, cycle that we do break out of this consolidation phase. Nothing has changed on that front. So just the short-term stuff, man. It's wicked, it's fun, it's, it's crazy to see it happen. But anyways, that's all I got. Take care, see you on the next one, bye-bye.